Hello. 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 So, uh, this will take about an hour and a half. I'm just okay. going to talk to you about your medical history for about an hour and 15, and then may do your blood pressure and or physical examination. Okay. Possibly. <laughs> okay. Right. So just to start with, what is it you'd like me to help you with today? Yeah, so recently I've been quite tired all the time. Um, I do think it's like a new thing because I used to have quite a lot of energy. Um, but yeah, it comes in waves. So like last month I was really, really like tired and drained all the time. And then this month I am feeling quite a bit better. Um, but I don't really know what link there is there. It's all a bit all over the place. And... Okay. When did when did this begin? When did you first start feeling tired? Um, like May this year. Yeah. Could you attribute that to anything? Can you pin that down to anything? I did have COVID in April. Okay. Um, but I did heal from it fine. And then... Okay. Yeah, it seems to have got worse and worse since May as well, so okay. I still don't know if it is that because I don't know why it would be getting worse. Sure, no, it does sometimes happen that after COVID people recover yeah. and then the, the post-COVID effects can come on later, okay. um, which is very strange, but it is something that I've seen a few times. So, right. um, so people get the post-viral fatigue, you know, in most infections... It's, you just stay tired after the infection, but some people, they seem to get better. And it's, it's, it seems to go similarly with breathing. Like some people, their breathing recovers, and then their breathing will get worse, and then it'll recover, and then it'll get worse. So it does, it sort of seems to improve in this non-linear, non-linear sort of wave, like you say. Yeah. So it sort of like gets a bit worse, and then it gets better, and then it gets worse. And so overall, over time, mm. the symptoms should get easier, okay. just without treatment. Right, <laughs> but obviously. I see. I'm a herbalist, so I'll see what we can do to expedite that process. But all right, so it began in May this year. So the yeah. main thing is fatigue. Have there been any other symptoms associated with that? Um, initially, I was having quite kind of a feeling of temperature. I know it wasn't when I whenever I would measure it, I wasn't like having high grade temperatures, um, and it was only like mid thirty sevens. And that seems to have stabilised now. Like, I haven't had it this month at all. Okay. But I was getting a lot of, like, it almost felt like hot flushes or something, which is okay. really strange for me. Did you, with the with that feeling of temperature, did you actually, uh, you said hot flushes, you felt hot? Did you actually sweat? Uh, yes, I think I did. Okay, yeah. and where did you feel it? Was it the top part of your body? Only face, head, where? Uh, mainly just the head, yeah. Okay. But not this month. Yeah, this month. I don't know if it is just the temperatures really helping, but yeah, or getting... I've got used to it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I think it sounds like you're you're getting better. But so when you had COVID in April, I presume that was diagnosed with a, a test. One yeah, of the LFTs. I did okay. it for a week straight for work. Okay, and um, did you, what did you have with symptom wise with COVID? Yeah, I had uh, a temperature. For the first two days, um, a really quite high one actually. Um, I had I lost my smell, but I kept my taste. Hmm. I had a really bad headache for most of the time actually, and then about halfway through, um, I really really struggled to breathe one night, and okay. it was that this feeling of like a pipe being down my throat, and I was breathing through a straw or something. Ooh. Yeah, but that was only one night. And then it got better. It felt like it got better, but then definitely since then, I do feel like it's harder to breathe as easily as I did before. I get breathless very easily. Does that, and this isn't a trick question, it could be completely separate, but does that actually coincide when you get those little breathless spells? Do yeah. they coincide with the fatigue or are they coming occurring separately? Um, the breathlessness will usually be if I'm moving, like some sort of to catch the tube or something okay. um and then the fatigue will come after i'm i finish moving okay so kind of yeah Int but so same time but not exactly at the same moment one after the other but they're happy they're yeah. coincident on the same days yeah yeah okay so short of breath when moving and fatigue afterwards 
that makes sense. So when you say uh, that the tiredness that sort of comes in waves, is this a tiredness that you feel all day long, or are we talking more fatigability? So what you've just described is more like, do you know what I mean? Is the yeah. dif- difference between the two would be because it could be both. <laughs> it could be one or the other. Okay. If you're tired all the time, like just constant fatigue, mm-hmm. you just constantly feel a bit knackered, like you haven't slept enough or whatever. Right. If you're easily f- more easily fatigued, like more fatigable, then it's like you, you're fine, but then you do a bit of exercise or do a bit of whatever, and then you're suddenly tired. Is it both of those? or? I'm definitely the easily fatigable one. Right. Yeah. So not, when you wake constantly. up, you feel okay. Yeah. You've got, you feel like you've got enough energy, but it's just you you, you, you burn out quickly when you're in that state. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Not T80, but very fatigable so give me an example of something that would really tire you out when you're having one of those yeah so at work the other day I had to be on my feet for like just it was just an hour of like kind of monitoring the elevators and helping guests get up and down the elevators because we had some old like elderly ladies coming and all I had to do was man the elevator and take them up to the floors but just being on my feet and moving back and forth for an hour, I was completely wiped. Right. I needed to sit down and then was really struggling to stand back up again once I'd sat down. Got it. Yeah. So one hour on feet at work. Dealing with people, dealing with the public can be quite tiring at times. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> one feet work equals very big. And how long... Ha- would you need to go to sleep after that or would you just need to sit down for a bit? How long would it take you to recover or would that be you done for the day? So I think after I, I kind of sat then at my desk again for a few hours, I was well enough to like go home and then okay. just rest all evening and then felt fine this morning once I'd wake up. Okay, so the fatigue persists for the rest of the day but you can sort of recover partial battery life by just doing nothing for a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Tiredness, last rest. There. Right, so you're saying this is happening in waves. It's less this month. So this month, mm. how often is that happening? Say, for example, it's tricky to put figures on this sometimes, but how many times a week? Honestly, like once. And some some weeks I didn't even have it at all this month. Okay, like, it sounds like you're coming out of the woods naturally. I hope so. so. <laughs> Yeah, mm, but okay. fingers crossed because I think it does really go up and down. Sure. So, so, so I'm at tiredness currently, and last month, how how often was it happening? Last month was quite bad, um, like twice a week, three okay. times a week, I think, a few weeks. Thank you. All right. Are there any other sort of headline symptoms? Because I will be going through lots more questions so we'll dig anything up if there's anything else but is there anything else headline that you'd like me to focus on i think those are the main ones yeah okay so really the fatigue and the shortness of breath that sort of precedes it thank you okay so let's pass medical history so yeah. when you were born were you born early or jaundiced or anything exciting exciting yes <laughs> i right I came out the right way, but the wrong way up. Okay. From what I remember, yeah. Mm, so, no, but not breach, not feet first. Just, yeah, just... I don't know the term for it, but upside yeah, down. Yeah, there's not really a word for that one, because people are always like, do you mean oh, I bet there is. Then... I bet there is a term for it, but... I upside down, baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Born but yeah, so they had to use, like, little clamps on my head to get ah, me out. Ah, so forceps. Yeah, okay. I've got, like, a bump somewhere on my head of, like some extra calcium or something. Interesting. No history of headaches or migraines or anything like that? Um. Don't have to be. Occasionally, yeah. I do get quite a few headaches, yeah. Okay, we'll get into that. Um, Thank you. And any illnesses as a child? Anything that laid you up or took you out of school? No, other than like a bad tooth. That's like it. I think they pulled a tooth out. <laughs> that is that is very slim pickings, which is good. <laughs> so <laughs> one time's bad tooth. So no, no, no hospital visits, no operations, no, nothing like that. whatsoever. No. Okay, great. Um, all right. So nothing during 
childhood, nothing during school years, no operations, tonsils, appendix, still there. All there, yeah. Excellent. All right, I'll just run through a quick list of conditions just to make sure you haven't had them. I'm pretty sure you won't have done, but we have to do it. Jaundice? No. Hepatitis? No. TB? No. Glandular fever? No. Rheumatic fever? No. Asthma? No. Eczema? No. Hay fever? Yes. Ah. Diabetes? No. I presume not. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, hay fever, have you had that all your life? Um, I don't think so, but I don't remember exactly when from. I feel like year six-ish, I remember having it still. So. Okay, what age is year That's six, really approximately? <laughs> I think it's like nine or ten. Okay, thank you. But I, I can't really guarantee that. No, 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 that's fine. That's just an approximate timeline placement. Yeah. That's fine, fine, fine. Yeah, nine, ten, hay fever. And for you, I mean, obviously, hay fever, everyone knows what it is, but what, what are the main symptoms? Is it sort of snottiness or itchy eyes or itchy throat or whatever? Um, yeah, get my nose gets affected or, like, stuffy. And then okay. itchy eyes. Not so much the throat, though. So no sneezing? No oh, sneezing, yes. Sneezing, yes, OK. Stuffy nose, itchy eyes, any no wheezing or short or breath. No, a bit, no. So it's not going over into asthma. Okay, no. thank you. Itchy eyes um, and sneezing. Thank you. Um, and when does that happen? What what months of the year ish? Um, it's usually like exam season, so it's always like April to June ish. Okay, April through June. Do you know? Um, what you are sensitive to there? Like, has any allerg allergist told you at any point in the past? I feel like I've noticed it's usually around grass pollen season, okay. so I feel like it might be probably. that. Probably, yeah. all right, yeah. So probably grass. Thank you. Okie doke. So other than the hay fever, um, nothing, no other, no other major medical upsets until... Covid. Yeah, it's literally it. Amazing. Yeah. You have had a stellar medical history. Um, <laughs> all right. So, are you taking? I presume no prescription medication at the moment. No. Excellent. Any over-the-counter stuff? So supplements or pharmacy bits. Yes, I take vitamin D supplements. Um, Great idea. Yeah, I had a blood test at the doctor's once. They told me I was low, so. I take that. What do you know the dosage? Yes, it's 3,000 uh, IU, I think it's That's the written. one. And that's just 3,000 IU once a day. Yeah. Yep. And then also just a multivitamin. That sounds very sensible. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Um, have you had all the usual sort of childhood vaccinations? So, you know, TB and can't remember the three they put in one, the MMR and all that. Yes, yeah, I believe so. Good, excellent. And have uh, COVID vaccinations? Yeah, I've had them all. Which, uh, can you remember which ones you had? Yes, Pfizer I had every time. Okay, and when? Oh, gosh. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Roughly, just to sort of... I think the booster was this time last year. Okay. And then it was the... The second jab was spring 2021, and then the first jab would have been maybe November 2020. Okay, no worries. And no uh, side effects or issues with any of those? No, just felt a bit gross and groggy the evening of all of them. That sounds normal. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, do you have any allergies, particularly, and well, we know about the hay fever, but any to medications at all? Uh -huh. I don't think so, no. Excellent. That is helpful. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. So, um, family history. So, really thinking about sort of illnesses that might be inherited here. So, with your grandparents on your mum's side, let's start on your mum's side, do you know if any of them had anything medical? Or if any of them, hopefully they're still around, but if any of them passed away, did they pass away with anything medical? Yes, yeah, so... My mum's side, my aunt and grand both have diabetes. Okay. Um, and I believe my 
granddad died of lung cancer, but I was so young I'm not really sure. Okay, like, was he a smoker? Yes. Okay. How old? It was he in his sixties or fifties? Really not sure. Something. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, was it for something to do with the lymph nodes as well? Actually. Not lymphoma. Because it, if it it could be lung cancer that spread into the lymph, or it I could think... be a primary lymphoma or something. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure. entirely uh, sure which one it is. Like, know, there's so, definitely something to do with the lymph nodes. Something not great. Associated with cancer, possibly lung cancer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. No, don't worry. And so he, in his in his possibly fifties or sixties. Yeah. Maybe okay. Yeah. And then your gran, what did and your auntie on your mum's side both with diabetes. Yeah. Is that adult onset diabetes? Adult onset. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Is your gran still around on your mum's side? Yes. And yeah. is she otherwise healthy? Yes. No yeah. high blood pressure or cholesterol. Or Anything like that? Not that I've heard of, no. Perfect. All right. And on your dad's side, same question. Yeah, I don't really know of any bad stuff on his side. I don't think there is any. Okay. Just That's bad, bad really side. good. You have a pretty good genetic legacy from that side then, so that's helpful. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. Brilliant. Thank you. So, all right. Your um, mum and dad... Do they have any health issues? Um, I do think my mum has high blood pressure recently, okay. yeah. Okie doke. And high cholesterol as well? Just the I, blood pressure? I think she's only been told about the high blood pressure to be careful with from okay. the doctors. Thank you. And uh, But your dad, fine? Fine, from what I know. <laughs> right, thank you. And do you have any brothers or sisters? And if so, are they all healthy? Healthy younger brother, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. All right. So I am assuming, no, but I shouldn't assume. Do you smoke at all? No. No smoking. All right. Good. Um, uh, any drinking? No. And any naughty substances? No. no. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um, uh, Excellent. So what do you do for sort of hobbies for recreation? Uh, reading. Excellent. Yeah. Any exercises or anything? I used to do yoga a lot, right. but I don't really have enough time in the day anymore <laughs> or energy. So. Okay, that's interesting. When did that stop? Was that a sort of, did that stop with the pandemic or did that stop with work or? Yeah, it stopped. At some point in lockdown, really. So it was before I was working full time. Okay. Um, but I don't think it originally stopped due to tiredness. It probably stopped due to laziness. So <laughs> back then it was a different issue. Well, you know what? It's when, when your routine changes, yeah. as it did for everyone in lockdown, it's, it, sometimes, it sometimes truncates things because a lot of the time we run on habit because it's quite a low power circuit. And then it's a lot harder to re-establish a habit or to establish a new habit than it is to maintain an old one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So now your life is differently shaped. You would have to find a place to sort of fit that yoga in there. So yeah. we'll talk about that because I think you could probably do with fitting a little bit of exercise in there. So, so all right. So reading, I, that's excellent. But no, so no, do you get any exercise at all, would you say? Entirely from my commute, it will be. So just... So you're running walk- around London. No, I mean that's often <laughs> enough. Are, are you are you walking or, or how are you? Yeah, like a combination of walking and getting the tube and stuff like that. But okay, so how much it. walking? Would you, I mean, it's a tricky question, but how much walking would you say you do in a day, for example, like minutes? Yeah, minutes. I really don't know. I know I get under ten thousand steps though. Okay, so it's not right. a lot. <laughs> okay, commute walks daily. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, definitely we could do with building a little bit of exit regular. Yeah. Okay. It's very, very, very easy to have a habit broken. And so, I don't know, we'll get into that. But one of my favourite phrases is set a low bar and stick to it. So I think the way we mostly sabotage ourselves is we set a really high bar and then find that we don't have time, energy, motivation to mm. accomplish that. And then sometimes that collapses and then it gets forgotten whereas if you just sort of say I'm going to do 
five to ten minutes of a yoga set every morning yeah that becomes more doable or in the evening or whenever it's convenient or even just start every other day with five minutes of yoga but make it a thing like brushing your teeth then it becomes a lot easier to sustain because after two or three weeks it's become a habit and then and you'll start hopefully feel the benefits of it so Mm. then you become incrementally more incentivized to do the thing yeah yeah (laughs) anyway Anyway, all right um so uh all sounds very very healthy the only the only thing is a little bit more exercise but you're getting lots of mental exercise which is very important um where you're living at the moment uh sort of clean uh sort of not damp uh good yeah and i've got a air filter thing every time that i look at the figures and it's all good so amazing i'm very impressed with that okay (laughs) F, I need one here. Uh, F. <laughs> um, yeah, London's probably a bit worse for air quality, I think. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd probably terrify me if I used it. So just... Oh, uh, it's even bigger. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. have, like, plants in every room of my home, but apart from this one, but um, still. Um, yeah. I do think at work, probably, I can't imagine the air's good, and I am there, like, most mm. of the day, five days a week. So. Okay. All right, so take me through your daily diet what do you eat so give me a breakfast lunch dinner sort of format what you sort of eat in a day right so i know i should be eating breakfast but i often skip it not necessarily bad but okay so usually no do you have anything like a drink or anything at breakfast time um yeah recently um i've been starting because i have been aware of how bad my diet is <laughs> so i've started having like a little green juice in the morning yeah. and then i have this it's very niche, but there's this Japanese drink called like amazake. I know, it. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Really? the fermented rice stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah I've been yeah. having that because I tried to stop drinking so much green tea because <laughs> I I met someone who also had long COVID potentially long COVID symptoms, and she said she thought caffeine might be making it worse. Oh, and... interesting. But I'll tell you, and it's yeah. an interesting little factoid about green tea. Yeah. You're quite right that caffeine in some people might make the fatigue worse yeah. but the flavonoids the antioxidants in green tea a couple of them are quite strongly antiviral including in the petri dish i hasten to add uh, somewhat antiviral against covid so it's not all that bad so uh, <laughs> <laughs> it depends how much i mean if you're mainlining pints of it and maybe reduce but you know uh, drinking a couple of cups is probably fine yeah i was having about four cups a day i think not crazy that's yeah. okay are you sensitive to caffeine would you say See, i don't really know um okay. then you're probably not <laughs> it was quite hard to cut it out though i did have okay. a really bad headache when you stopped when i stopped as I if i was like withdrawal symptoms yes like that. that is literally caffeine withdrawal oh yeah, yeah. it was yeah. that three days, three days it was bad the headache headache and feeling tired and not motivated very and grumpy yeah. yes <laughs> yes that's caffeine withdrawal <laughs> Um, so yeah, but you're so currently no green tea. So yeah, now you're having it's Amazaki. Very sad. I, I miss it. <laughs> Do you know what? What I'd suggest is because I am I I I am a big chocolate fan, as in a proper chocolate. So I have like half a pint of chocolate twice a week because I love it. And then like maybe one day a week I'll have a proper Japanese matcha tea. Okay. Um, but I I don't have caffeine more than three days a week. Personal choice. I like no no shade to anyone who has it every day. Yeah. But. For me, that preserves the nice effects of it. Like, I'll have a nice little lift from it, which is enjoyable. Yeah. But it stops me getting into that dependency thing. So if you just have it no more than maximum three days a week, I'd yeah. say maybe twice, two days a week as a little treat. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, I have my chocolate days on days when I'm doing work at home. And I'm not going to be disturbed. And because I like it for mental work and I can sort of relax and enjoy it. Yeah. And I sometimes have green tea if I have a bit of uh, work to do with other people yeah that's just choice it's it seems aesthetically right to do that but <laughs> yeah. so the, the point the point is i don't think you need to well we'll get into it but i think if your sleep is okay mm-hmm. and green tea didn't disturb your sleep in any way i don't think it did okay yeah. then i think you'd be okay to just have it up to three times a week should stop you from yeah. getting dependent on it i was definitely dependent yeah. on it because it was yeah. like every morning until i had but you have to be strict about it if you do that, because it's very easy to go, oh, I'm really tired this morning, I'll just have a cup of tea. So no, you kind yeah. of have to, you know, you have to find alternative uh, 
means of waking yourself up, which is really just powering through yeah. as you are doing. It's getting moment. easier though. Yeah. It's quite amazed. It does. I think yeah. probably if you've given up caffeine, you've how long have you been without it now? It's only been like two and a half weeks. Oh, do the whole month. Do a whole month. A whole month. Do <laughs> oh. a whole month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think I think in, in the past when I've when I've gone on a little caffeine fast, at least a month I think to sort of reset things a bit. Right. Okay. Otherwise, it's too soon. It's oh, I feel better now. I'll just just straight back on it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. Okay. I'll months. I'll power it through then. Yeah, yeah. You're doing well. Then. It's good. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So the green juice. What's in that? Um, that's also another Japanese one. I believe when I looked it up, it was barley barley shoots or something like that. No. Not not green barley grass. Barley grass. Barley grass, maybe. It's. They said it's usually wheat grass, and then yeah. it was the Yakult one that was using like a different wheat okay. that was basically similar. Mm. Oh no, maybe. It, hold on, sorry. Yeah, I think it is wheat grass, and usually they use kale. That's okay. it. Sorry, okay, yeah, okay, it's okay. a wheat oh, grass. No, no, that's shop. good. That's great. That's great. Oh, so it's just straight up wheat grass. I believe so. Sorry, all no. over the place in my ingredients. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't even know what's in them, so that's that's pretty good. So, uh, so you're happy, and you usually have one or the other, like the wheatgrass juice or the Amazaki, or you'd have both? I have both, yeah. So, because I really like drinking warm things in the morning. Nice. But yeah. it's a lot of effort to make the green, dra- green, green, green drink, drink yeah. warm, and yes. then it's a bit gross. So <laughs> I have a shot of that, and then I'll have my nice warm that Japanese drink. Makes sense yeah Good. all right yeah, yeah so what time would that be normally um about 9 40 okay perfect work, yeah um so lunch time would be when 12 45 okay and what would you normally have recently a halloumi wrap okay <laughs> almost Great. every day I mean, halloumi is very tasty. And I, I say this as a vegan, it's very tasty. So, so halloumi wrap. Um, any any uh, other examples, other lunches, if that's like daily at work at the moment, are there other lunches, weekend and stuff? Yeah, I have quite a lot of like rice with some sort of leftover curry or something recently. Or... Nice. Yeah. And... Um... What they, I assume in the wrap and whatever, there'd usually be some veg, like some green stuff in there. There is, yeah. Which I've, I've been trying to have that instead of, of having a lot of, like, just take out before. Okay, groovy. And is there is there protein in these in the front? Obviously halloumi cheese, yes, but rice and curry, there'd be beans or what sort of things would be in the curry? I don't think the curry, it's more like there's chicken, okay. there's well, that's potatoes. Protein. Oh, okay. Yeah, carrots. That's all good. Um, that sounds great. Yeah. Oh, good, good. <laughs> um, all right, so dinner would be when? Uh, about 7.30. Excellent. And what would you have? It really depends on the day, but dinner's going to be the bad ones. It's like more burgers, <laughs> more okay. cheap food. I think I had, like, fish cakes and salad yesterday. Wait, so when you say bad... Because let's just dispense with the judgment for the moment. But let's say, if you say bad, you mean more fried often. Yeah, more okay. fried, more likely to be delivery. Okay, I'm tired. gotcha, gotcha. All right, all righty. And would you normally have any sort of fruit or um, green stuff with that, or not? Salad sometimes with dinner. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, salad. Yeah, and fruit would be. If I go to MS at lunch and do grab some nice. fruits because right. I'm so craving it, like watermelon or something. All right. Gotcha. So um, do, do you have snacks at all? Or are you a snacker? Or is that pretty much it for the yeah, meal I'm times? not really a sn- If I do snack, there's some nuts on my desk. Unsalted Excellent. nuts. <laughs> Very good. Right. Unroasted, unsalted. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Most plain ones I could find. Yeah, which is really boring, but best for you. So, yeah. Yeah, so nuts are uh, uh, great. I mean, as a vegan, I eat my body weight in them, but they they are, um, <laughs> but they are um, better. Unfortunately, unroasted. And of course, I do roast them to put them in meals and stuff because mm. they're they're much more flavoursome once they're roasted. Yeah. But when you roast them, same as when you uh, heat up any protein. Actually, this is true of like meat as well. You produce AGEs, these advanced glycation end products that aren't so good for you. I mean, they're not going to kill you overnight, but it's like, it's like, um, 
it's a it's a minor side effect of eating to stay alive uh where, you know if you, you you get ages in some foods and they tend to be higher in roasted foods that are cooked at very high temperatures and that are browned mm -hmm. so the same browning reactions that produce an increase in flavor and make mm -hmm. things more flavorful mm -hmm. really irritatingly also produce more of these ages so mm -hmm. the way to do, to deal with that is i don't think to deny yourself those foods completely mm -hmm. but to eat uh, uh proportion more raw foods as long as they're safe and healthy and good raw foods and also when you're sort of doing things like toasting nuts to include lot of foods with antioxidants in the meal like veg whatever it's all sounding a bit orthorexic but but in the bottom line when you actually when you just eat normally a, a range of stuff you'll usually cover those bases right. but it's not a good idea just to, if you're snacking every day on toasted nuts yeah much better if you can just just it's dotting on his crossing t's level of kind of improving yeah. you know just if you can if you can level up your diet just by well i normally eat that so let's choose the slightly healthier option mm. then over years that will pay dividends yeah yeah, yeah. that makes sense yeah. yeah so it's not about sort of being that's what I'm trying to say. It's not about being too orthorexic about it and going, I have to make everything perfect because that's bad. Yeah. Um, it's more about just kind of going, OK, I know that thing is slightly less healthy. So let's have that as a flavour thing or as an enjoyable snack. And then let's, but most if I'm having it every day, let's choose that option. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I think, yeah, I'd seen the AGE things somewhere before. And I think I was a bit confused about it because I was like, it's very ironic that the video was something about anti-aging. Mm -hmm. They're talking about these things called AGEs, and I was like... It's, it's kind of hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, the acronym AGE, it stands for, like I say, Advanced Glycation End Product, and the glycation bit means sugar. So it's, as I understand it, which is probably somewhat inaccurate, but it's sticking, it's when proteins are heated and they kind of get protein and sugar get stuck to each other and produce these molecules which are damaging. They're, they're, they're um, pro-oxidant. So they, they, so this is going to end up as a lecture, but basically the, the oxidation is, um, is, it happens naturally in every cell in the body, which respires. So all our cells produce energy by using glucose and oxygen to create energy in the form of ATP. That process naturally produces what are called free radicals, mm. which always sound to me like little Che Guevara's running around, but it's actually just like they're, it's more like soot produced from a, a reaction. Right. So free radicals, what they actually are, are little single electrons which bounce around, knocking electrons off other atoms and creating a little chain reaction of instability. Mm -hmm. So it's like soot produced from the normal respiratory processes produces these oxidative particles these free radicals so antioxidants are substances either made by your body or which you can ingest in some foods mm -hmm. which have a spare electron to donate so they donate the electron and stabilize this little free radical right. so they're like they're, th they're things that your body makes to neutralize so in other words it's like burning sugar with oxygen in every cell of your body produces this soot these free radicals mm -hmm. which when it builds up it damages the cell they cause these little chain reactions and antioxidants are like little soot cleaners or well, what they're actually doing is donating spare electrons to neutralize the free radicals yeah and your body makes them and you can get them in some foods so like vitamin c is an antioxidant loads of the pigments in fruit and vegetables are antioxidant there's loads of these things that are antioxidant ages are a specific and again, I may be slightly wrong here, but I'm in the right ballpark. AGEs are basically strong uh, sort of oxidant things that are produced naturally when you heat up proteins with sugars. And these molecules like a little sort of like pro-oxidant wrecking balls, they go in and sort of like create chain reactions. So you need, if you have lots of antioxidants with them or some compounds, I have to say, particularly made by many plants, useful plants, those compounds will neutralise the effects of those AGEs. But the best way to sort of uh, reduce the harm of AGEs is to ingest less of them. Yeah, so, yeah that makes so, sense. Yeah, so they're often produced in, as I say, sort of high temperature reactions of protein with sugar. So usually that is browning reactions. That, that, you know, so like it, frying things? Or... Anything that creates tasty browning so yes so frying roasting you know particularly we're talking usually cooking with uh, 
oil, which by the way, I do. I'm not a purist. Mm. I'm not saying you have to issue these things completely. It's just if you're eating a lot of fried stuff. Or, so anything that's crispy or toasted. Right. So ordinary toast, which I have a lot. I like it. Um, or, you know, roast potatoes or all of these things. All of those will, the, the, the browning reactions that in cooking, uh, they're named after some guys called Mr. Maillard and Mr. Strecker, so they call them Maillard reactions or Strecker reactions, but they're reactions that create those lovely flavour compounds. Mm -hmm. Those same reactions will usually create some AGE type compounds. Oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying. But, the, but the, the beautiful thing is if you're having a good balanced meal with lots of like good veg with it and stuff, yeah. you'll be neutralising a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And also you kind of want your food to be tasty yeah. because you want to be incentivized to eat it. So having a little bit of that sort of like having a little bit of fried stuff or some roasted nuts or whatever to encourage you to eat the whole thing is fine. It's yeah. just about not going overboard so that the whole meal is fried or so that every time you have nuts, they're like roasted nuts or that, you know what I mean? It's that yeah, yeah. because we're talking cumulative things over time because, you know, I don't believe that you can avoid aging. I don't believe that you can avoid decrease in function over time. But what you can do is just tip things so that the balance is more, a little bit more favourable. Yeah, yeah. And that, I don't think that's about being extreme because I don't think, I think in the end, if you try and be super crazy about it, well, you can see it, it you become, people get orthorexic, you can get too controlled with the diet. Mm. And... I think every, I mean, this is from a Chinese, med I'm not a Chinese herbalist, but yeah. there's a concept in Chinese medicine or in most traditional medicines that every extreme turns into its opposite. So if you get overly controlled about your eating, so these people who do a 100% raw diet or a 100% fruitarian diet, yeah. it ends up becoming unhealthy because of all the stuff they're restricting and all yeah. that. So anyway i'm lecturing yeah. now so I'm going it's to kind of sad <laughs> when you think about it because they probably started with good intentions right and it's, i, th I think those diets have, have lots of lots of good stuff in them but they're yeah. so hyper focused on mm. achieving that goal mm. that it ends up becoming destructive yeah in in the long run yeah. So, which is interesting. Yeah. Although I'm sure, like on the internet, there'll be people who disagree strongly with that sentiment. Okay. So, what do you drink throughout the day? Um, usually just plain water. Yeah. Well, Brita filter water. <laughs> Brita filter. I want to get one of those bougie under sink filters one of these days, but uh, you know, they're quite expensive. But yeah, so because probably in the long run, cheaper than using a Brita filter and changing it every month. Definitely. Mm. So just filtered water. How much water do you drink throughout the day, would you say? I'd say I drink a lot. I'm not entirely sure exactly how much, but definitely have a Brita, little built-in Brita okay. water bottle that big. You know? Okay, so maybe one and a half litres, something like that. Yeah, probably. I do, I do drink a lot of water. Okay. And any... Uh, you said you were drinking green tea. You have your Amazaki in the morning and green juice. Any yeah. other liquids? Teas or... Because I'm not drinking green tea right now, that's no. kind of it. Okay, that sounds fine. Yeah. Right, just some general questions. So general sort of medical, sort of systems inquiry. Okay, so do you ever get any chest pain? Yes, occasionally, yeah. Just like here, yeah. Okay, when does that tend to happen? or How often? Um, it seems to be in the evenings. I'm never entirely sure why. Like sometimes lying down, so it's probably just awkward posture or something, maybe. When you're lying down, are you normally, when it happens, I don't know if you uh, record this, but are you lying on your back or on your side? Um, back, I think. But I'm, I'm really not sure. Okay. I'd probably be on my phone, so some sort of okay. combination yeah, yeah. of the two. Gotcha. All right. And uh, are they, uh, if you, how intense are they? Uh, so if you zero to ten, zero being nothing, ten being max. Three or four. Like okay. I, I can ignore it. Okay, but that's pretty intense. And how long do they last? Um, it, it goes away. Like it comes in like bursts, but I think if, I ignore it, like it's gone within 10 minutes or so. Okay, so it can last up to 10 minutes, okay. Yeah. And is, are there any palpitations with it? 
No, no. Okay, no palpitations. Excellent. And how often is that happening, would you say? So say this past couple of weeks. It's really infrequent. Like I've okay. only had it like t once or twice this, this month for all the weeks, yeah. Very infrequent. So maybe, would you say well, once or twice a month? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Miss. All right. Any ankle swelling? No. Well, I thought so. Any shortness of breath? You mentioned, well, we talked about that. Yeah. There was shortness of breath as part of the main thing. Uh, other than when you're getting the shortness of breath, those sudden little attacks, you're not short of breath when you're normally when you're walking or running for a bus or something? Um, no, not unless I've just overdone it and done too much okay. walking and running. So generally speaking, no, just when you're having those uh, moments of spontaneous yeah, breath. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, hands and feet normally warm, cold? How's your circulation? They're usually quite cold, okay. yeah. Have they always been that way? Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, any varicose veins at all? Exactly those again. I wouldn't have thought so because they're usually sort of an older person's little okay. present. Um, but they're they're um, larger, more visible blue veins that are usually a little bit bulgy. I don't think so. No, no, mm, no. I'm no. very, very sure that you wouldn't have. <laughs> they're the they're normal, often found on the calf veins. or sometimes on the inner thigh or the legs, but usually low legs yeah. because people do this. Crossing, you know. Yeah, um, I can see veins, but I don't think they're like special not veins. Bulgy, not bulgy, yeah, not bulgy veins. veins yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, any coughing at all? No. no. Excellent. And no um, snottiness. I mean, other than in hay fever season, no snottiness mm. or catarrh or sore throats or anything like that. No. Nope. Excellent. Um, any problems with the waterworks peeing? Nope. Excellent. Um, not going too frequently or getting up at night to pee or anything like that. Just once or so in a room, probably. Okay. Most nights, one time? Yeah, most nights. Okay, thank you. Does that disturb your sleep or are you able to get back to sleep? Most nights, yeah, I get back to sleep fine. Okay, excellent. Now, you mentioned headaches earlier. Mm -hmm. How often are they happening? Um, it's really hard to put numbers on things. It is. It's always, we always ask these really awkward questions, yeah. it's like quantify it. It's tricky. Honestly, I don't know. But at least twice a week okay. when, when I'm at work at my screen or, yeah. So that's when you notice it, usually when you're sitting down? It's always at work, working. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Always> <laughs> Other than the caffeine withdrawal thing I had at the weekend. <laughs> that's a whole separate <laughs> issue. So that was self-inflicted. Well, that's like everybody's like humans. Um Oh, there's a reason it's the most popular drug in the world, caffeine, it is yeah. by far. So two days a week um, average, how long would they last when you get one? Um, yeah, a good few hours. Yeah. Oh, really? And again, if you had to, sorry, quantification question, if you had to mark it out of 10, where would, how intense would they be? Zero to 10? Two. Okay, so yeah. pretty mild, but niggly. Yeah, it's there. Got it. And where on the head are they? Always like here, around the around eyes. Around the eyes. That yeah. sounds very screeny, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you did say it's often when you're using screens. Do you have them when you've not been on a screen? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Might have a few fixes for that. So, okay, a few headaches. Um, a f uh, you said lasted up to... A few hours, I think he said. Yeah. And then headaches around eyes. Always. When using screens. Thank you. Any dizziness at all? Um. Occasionally. But it usually has some sort of reason for it. Like I haven't eaten or. Okay. Again, maybe sometimes with the fatigue, there's a tiny bit of dizziness there and I just want to lie down. Okay, so that happens. When you say occasionally, how many times in the past couple of weeks have you noticed that? Once. Okay, so what yeah. is that about right-ish? Once every fortnight at the moment? Dizziness. Hmm. Once every fortnight. Uh, maybe even less. Okay. Yeah. Once a month? Yeah, I'd go with that. Okay. It was 
worse in August. I had like the worst period of all these symptoms. Okay. And then the dizziness was more than that. So, and you, the same with the headaches, were more frequent in August. No, the headaches seem to be They, they seem to be their own yeah. thing, don't they? Where it's green, yeah. so it's more the dizziness, the shortness of breath, the fatigability. That was all worst in the yeah. August. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like the peak of whatever that was. Got it. So that dizziness is something you'd associate very much with the presenting complaint, very much with the mm. main thing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's helpful. So about once a month recently, and how long does that dizziness last? Um, not not too long because I usually just lie down and straight that away and then sorts it out once you've rested. Yeah, a bit. you feel a bit like like almost a bit tipsy. Got it. Yeah, yeah. wobbly. Yeah. Five minutes, ten minutes, half an hour. Ten. If I had to put a number on it. Mm, okay. Thank you. That's ten minutes duration. Thank you. Um. And that's worst in August. I've got to record that. Okie doke. Any problems with, uh, I'm assuming not, but your hearing? No. no. Good. I'm glad you didn't say pardon, because that's what most people say at that point. Um, what? Uh, so any ringing in the ears? No. Lovely. And any pins and needles anywhere? Uh, no, no, only if I sit. Like on a, a funny yeah. angle. Yes, fine. Uh, and just generally, do you? I mean, this is a this is literally a medieval question. This is what the medieval physicians used to ask. But um, any perturbations of the mind? In other words, is there anything that is worrying you or that's on your mind at the moment that you're um, okay to talk about? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Okay, yeah. so there's no particular thing. So yeah. good, good. That doesn't have to be. <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing I stress about is filming, so... Okay, that's yeah. but that's just like the daily stress of... Yeah, office. yeah. Okay, uh, so nothing major, good. Any weird skin things, like lumps, bumps, patches? No. Nope. Odd things? No? So no, no itchy bits, no moles, no... No. Great. Through a Okay, how's your digestion? Yeah, pretty good. Excellent. Good appetite? Yeah. No nausea, not feeling sick any yeah. of the time? Excellent. Um, your weight stable? Uh, increasing. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. And so, uh, do, do you mind what, what your current weight and height is? Uh, I'll go with 51 kilograms. Okay, that's good. Fine. And okay. height? 160 centimetres. Thank you. That's fantastic. I was 48 for a good three years, so I've <laughs> so put on a lot of weight. I, I don't think that matters. Um, all right, so fantastic. And uh, any dental problems at all? Uh, no, not really, no. Great. And any heartburn? No. Good. So um, any issues with joint pain or back pain? Nope, not really. Perfect. And uh, just in terms of menstrual cycle, at what age did you start menstruating? That's a really good question. Um, Ish. <laughs> again, I know it's year seven, but I know that's really unhelpful. Well, no, we can work that out because you said year but, six was Yeah, I don't know if year six was right. Okay, okay, all right, okay. So maybe, maybe well, we I could do the maths really quickly. 11 to 12, 12 to 13, 15 to 14, 15, 15 to 16. I started with 11 to 12, I would have been 11. Thank you, that's excellent. Because 16 is year 11, yeah. That sounds very, very usual, so good. Um, any problems with the cycle? No, not So it's a regular, uh, no big period pains or heavy Only periods or anything like the that? The first day is bad. It's so pain on the first day? Yeah, okay. just cramps and the usual. Okay, and do you have to take painkillers? Um. I think I did more in like sick form and stuff where I couldn't focus on class, but now I just... Nowadays, just, sort of, just steal it out, just yeah. go through, okay, fine, thank you. Um, all right, so um, I have to ask, any pregnancies at all? No. Good? Oh, well, I mean, okay. yeah. <laughs> context dependent. Um, and no uh, previous history of infections, uh, sexual, sexually transmitted infections? No, no. Excellent. 
Um, good. I think we've covered just about everything. And just, I think this, uh, probably you've answered this already in another way, but um, do you feel sensitive to hot or cold environments? Um, you don't have to feel sensitive to each bit either, but do you prefer, do you have a preference? Yeah, I've always preferred hot environments okay. because I you tend know, to feel cold quite a cold easily. person, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. To prefer what? Thank you. That's great. All right. I think we've got everything. Was there anything else that you wanted to sort of mention or foreground that I haven't covered? I think that's everything. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Excellent. In that case, I will just take your blood pressure and your pulse. Okay. And I think we're done. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Right, just one one arm, doesn't matter which. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. is terrible so I'll calculate that later but that looks perfectly acceptable. And I just need the upper arm so it might need to take um the, oh, yeah. yeah yeah just it needs to go around the arm. Okay. Super Thank you very much. Got the old school one everyone else is using the electronic ones now because they're much easier but Oh yes, the pump one. Yeah, we, tra we trained with this one and we sort of like have a, I'm reluctant to give it up. I'm just straighten the arm a second. That's great, relax again, thank you. That's fine. Fantastic. 108 over 74, which is lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's low normal, so perfect. diagnosis which I think I can tell you right now will be post-covid fatigue but <laughs> I think I'll come up with a working diagnosis and a little treatment plan I don't think too much is needed because it sounds to me like you're on your on your way to recovery naturally anyway yeah. so it's just a case of um, sort of accelerating that which is pretty easy to do I think and I think what we'll try and do for you because you've got another two of these sessions yeah. is to just sort of give you some tools that you can take away that, that sort of improve your long-term health. Thank so you. they'll be like, well, that's my job. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so there'll, be, there'll, there'll be little little yeah. homeworks. So um, there are a few ideas that I had today just from, from things that you mentioned. Um, so I will put all that in an email to you on Monday. So if you, you they'll sort of usually, because I'm, the only thing I'd say is because I'm, from a user hotmail email address mm -hmm. if you haven't got an email from me by five o'clock check the junk box right okay. <laughs> so, okay and if you still haven't got one text me and go where the heck's my email <laughs> so, right, got it. It, it, it'll be arriving on monday um, right. okay. well thank you thank so you much coming. thank you <laughs>
So this is going to be your first follow-up since I saw you a month ago. Yeah. How have things been? Uh, things have been really good, yeah. Um, I've been following a lot of the advice you gave me to do in my free time. So I'll try and think of the main ones I've been doing. Dark chocolate. Okay. Um, I found an 100% dark chocolate. 100%? Is that not too strong for you? Is that alright? So first I did 90% for about a week and... <laughs> I realised by the point that it's 90, it was so bitter anyway, I might as well go to 100. <laughs> Fine. I've been having it like with lunch with the blueberries so okay. that I just don't treat the chocolate as a sweet, okay. I treat it as like a, a savoury nice. item. And then I find it's a bit easier to eat, um, so I've been having that, the uh, handful of blueberries been having. Um, one of the first things I did for my eye strain was on my work computer, um, I tried to make it like I think it was like warmer toned or something. Okay, like good, the yes. Night mode. To reduce the blue light in the evening. Okay. Yeah, so I've been using that evening mode in the daytime and the boss hasn't said anything so it's all okay. <laughs> and yeah. has that helped the headaches do you think? I think so a lot, yeah. Excellent. I've had a lot of screen based work the last two weeks. I think I would be a lot worse if this was like how it used to be. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. I'll get some numbers, but thank you. <laughs> Alright, that's good. Uh, that sounds fantastic. And I think, respect, I said last time, the other little bit of homework was the three minute meditation or something like that. Yeah. Have you managed that? I think that's the one I'm probably the worst at out okay. of the homework. So I, because I get up and go straight to work, um, the only time for that is the evening. Okay. And in the evening I'm just the definition of wanting to do nothing. So I've tried. Which is fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've tried in like the kitchen at work to just kind of, while I'm doing the stretches and stuff, like when I'm waiting for the kettle to boil. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of use that time for just quiet and kind of stretch my neck while I'm at it. Okay. So, but it's not three minutes, it's probably about that, 30 seconds. Look, I think even a little daily is good. Just like a little bit of daily mindfulness. And the thing is, it shouldn't become a massive heavy chore if it just becomes another thing to add to your to-do list that makes your to-do list even heavier, then it's going to stress you out more and that's totally the opposite of what we want to do so that's perfect just like while the kettle's boiling if it's something where you're just going to be hanging around anyway yeah. magic just do a little bit then so that's great and then uh the, sort of doing a little massage around the eyes temples and scalp or something like yeah. that again like that one i've been doing while i'm at my desk but mainly like here for my eyebrows stuff like that great but, yeah i think those two are like the bottom of my it's pretty much full marks. I'd say that's that's nine out of ten at least. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go through the other bits. You mentioned that you you've had a lot of screen time in the last couple of weeks, and I think last time I wrote down that you were having these headaches around the eyes, maybe um, twice a week. Um, has has that been happened? How often have you been having them recently? Same same frequency. No, it's definitely less, because I did, I did change the screen like almost immediately. Um, I have had some, one this week I think, early this week, Tuesday maybe. Okay. But again, I was really on the screen all, all day that day trying to hit a deadline, so... Okay. Um, well, did you have one the week before? Has it gone down to like once a week now, or is it... I didn't have one last week, no. So, I'm going to say 1 to 7 to 1 out of 14 then, so up to once a week, but like once a week to once every two weeks maybe, so yeah. something like that, we'll see. Yeah. And if you had to, and, and how, how in, was it, was it, did it last as long as it did before? I think last time you said they last a few hours, often up to the morning if I remember. Mm. Um, and I sort of, yeah, how, often, how long did they last, this one that you had this week? I think it was still the same as normal in terms okay. of time. So it's lasted all morning? It was the same duration, uh, similar duration? Yeah, although it was in the afternoon this time. Okay, yeah. sorry, not paying attention, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> similar duration all afternoon, okay. That's interesting that it shifted a bit as well, because I think before you'd said it was most often in the morning, I think. 
Maybe I've made that up. Um, Hopefully after a day's work. No, you, yeah. you, you, I'm making that up. You did always say it's just around the eyes and just associated with the work. I've, I've just mm. added the morning thing in there. don't know why. Uh, and then you, you said last time, out of ten, if ten was sort of maximum pain and zero was none, where would you put the pain of this recent one? Three or four. Oh, that's pretty intense. So that's well, relative. Last time it was two out of ten. So oh, it's a bit if last time it was two, then it's like a one and a half. No, you're, you're you're revising it now. So okay, would you oh, would you say it was? I said three or four because I thought it was like a little. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. It's cool. definitely not as painful as last time. Okay. 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 That's good. That's good. So, yeah. uh, pain. I'm gonna uh, less than last time? Question mark. Okay. Because, I mean, the, the thing is, it really depends on personality here, because some people, if they're pessimists, will tend to make the score higher right. or lower or whatever. Basically, if you're an optimist, you'll tend to want to... So I think because you're basically an optimist, you know, you'll kind of give me... It could be that you're giving me the real score and then the revised score. So I, I want to be... I'll note both. Okay. So you say the pain is less, yeah. but the score was... Um, uh, it's three to four out of ten but I understand what you're saying about your, you were thinking it was probably higher last time yeah I think probably last time I was here I'd had a lot more health issues in a short space of time yeah. I had something to compare against this one for being so good that it's almost like <laughs> Well, that's oh, good. there's nothing out of ten, that's so good. I'll give it a three or a four. <laughs> that makes so, me happy. That's good. <laughs> All right. So I mean, obviously, the the, the post COVID stuff was gradually getting better anyway. So yes, we're on yeah. a trajectory. How's that been? Because just the main thing last time I think was the shortness of breath and the fatigue, and that you were down to once a week last time. Yeah. So literally, actually, so up until yesterday, there was nothing, okay. nothing at all, and right. So last time I mentioned how like I hadn't been drinking caffeine, yeah. and so I don't know why it occurred to me yesterday, but yesterday was my first cup, cup of caffeine, I had uh, well, two okay. packs of green tea after, gosh, a month and a half, two months, okay. it's like a long time of not, not at really all. having it at all, just maybe a tiny bit here and there, like I think one time I had a cup of uh, Earl Grey that okay. I had a friend, but it, that was the first massive intake. And it was really weird. My similar symptoms came back, and they were like really similar to my long COVID symptoms. In what way? So, what did you experience? I, like almost the feeling of a hot flush, um, the like faintness. Although I had a bit of nausea as well, so that okay. I never had that with long COVID. So okay. Not. And it's so weird that it was like an hour and a half after the caffeine. The, you know that dark chocolate also has some caffeine in it. So you've been having a little bit of caffeine in the dark chocolate, right. but that the purpose of the dark chocolate is not mainly as a stimulant, it's mainly the yeah. brown stuff, the polyphenols help improve circulation, okay. they, they're really good for the <laughs> circulation. So I'm wondering, what time of day did you have that green tea, and did you have it on top of the chocolate, or was it in any way, because if, if it was, you might have, you know... Too much. Yeah. I had the green tea just before lunch and then had the chocolate at lunch. Okay, maybe. So it may may have been that you might have been able to get away with it with just one cup of green tea and then the chocolate. Bear in mind chocolate, although it's not very high in caffeine, it does contain some caffeine. Right. So, and a little bit should be fine, but it's interesting with sometimes with long covid or with post viral syndromes anyway it kind of makes the nervous system a little bit squiffy that's not a very biologically accurate term but it essentially means that stimulants which should give you energy sometimes just make you feel more knackered it can cause a crash nice. um people living with me you know or, or, or chronic fatigue syndrome complain of this a lot like if they drink coffee or tea sometimes depending on the person it can make them feel absolutely exhausted so that will change over mm. time but while you're it will gradually disappear but um these those kind of tendencies can linger for a while so bear in mind that the I think I, we gave a little prognosis and you're on track so that, that makes me happy I said significant improvement in under one month so yay, that's good because looking at the trajectory and then I thought maybe five months to just get out of the woods fully so that just means you'll I think you, you'll you be feeling pretty good most of the time but just that little vulnerability to you know just being a bit more mindful for that time because things might 
tip tip back a little bit if yeah. you overdo it in some domain yeah. like in, if you have too many stimulants or if you just like get extra stressed or suddenly go and eat a load of chips for three days running or something do you know what I mean it's like yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's that sounds great so far Melissa really good yes. really really good really good really positive um so did you when, when yesterday uh you just had um you said you felt a bit sick which was unusual yes yeah so i think that's definitely just related to that'll be the caffeine the for sure caffeine or, yeah just it detoxifying me too just a bit it wouldn't be a detox thing but okay. we, if you sometimes caffeine and interestingly enough often green tea on an empty stomach can make people feel sick much more so than black tea had it on an empty stomach there we go green tea on its own on an empty stomach can make some people feel sick so uh, it's it's a known thing so if you have matcha tea for example which is just a powdered green tea um some people will drink it as their sort of breakfast like to have to start the day with instead of having coffee or whatever you know another caffeinated thing but um some people which makes me really sick so um so green tea is is notorious for that sometimes it's a great beverage don't get me wrong yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah it's just don't know why because it the caffeine content is often pretty much the same as black tea because but it's obviously got it's got different compounds in so anyway but it does so yeah. it may just be the fact that you had two cups of green tea and then a bit of chocolate on top, so there was too much caffeine, and the green tea itself might have made you feel a bit sick. So. Yeah, that's all the all the bad yeah. things that could have happened. <laughs> yeah. A little perfect storm. But yeah. did you did you get the same sort of shortness of breath afterwards? A little bit, but I don't know how much of it was me freaking out of like I've been healthy for a month. What is this happening? <laughs> and I, I laughed when you told me this because it's just like it's usually when people are just about to come for their next consultation that some wheel falls off or something it's just (laughs) that's that's totally normal so but no that that i I suspect this may just have been a a little sort of stimulant overdose wobble rather than any significant thing but good good. um all right so any chest pain because you mentioned last time that was once or twice a month that had Uh, been happening yeah none at all fantastic all right Great. No chest pain. And uh, have you had a menstrual period since I last saw you? Yes, yeah. Okay, and what was that like? Because you mentioned last time that would often be just a bit of discomfort on the first day. Yeah, exactly the same as usual. So no change for that there at all? No change at all. some discomfort on day one and was there any um, pre-menstrual uh, sort of sugar cravings and breast tenderness stuff going on? Um, no sugar cravings, just, yeah, same, same symptoms as Everything usual. else was the yeah, same, yeah. okay. Yeah, so some breast tenderness, but no sugar cravings. Yeah, no sugar tenderness. Oh, sugar tenderness. Sugar, you got, yes, no, not like that, definitely. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, some, uh, thank you. Um, when, when was that in the past month? Because I know you bought the herbs about a month ago, three weeks ago, and yeah. probably started taking them, I'm guessing, about three weeks ago. Yes. Um, did you manage, by the way, to do the twice daily? Not every day, but <laughs> most days. The okay. morning, I'm always really good. And then it's the evening it's one the that you forget. That I forget. Try to put them in a place where you will be reminded. So, maybe sometimes, did they, it was one bottle, wasn't one, yeah. it? Yeah, 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 I might be two next time or something so 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 um you get one there's two tricks you can do one is decant and put them next to the toothbrush or the kettle or something uh, so that you remember you're reminded yeah. the second thing is don't worry too much if you if you think oh damn i've eaten and i've forgotten because i think it says before meals doesn't it on the label yeah. the before meals bit is just so that it's going in on an empty stomach so the absorption is a bit better right. um doesn't matter massively as long as it goes in i would say so okay that's good to know okay because, yeah there have been times where i think i've eaten and i'm like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Again? it's more about like optimal versus practical right. do you know what i mean so yeah okay. so but evening dose sometimes forgotten but generally pretty good yeah. um thank you so uh, where in what when when was the last period was it a week ago a couple of weeks ago was it near the beginning of the herbs or middle or? finished yesterday okay so right towards the end yeah. okay 
so this hasn't they haven't made a dent in the period at least as yet um, thank you uh, here we go sometimes all my writing here I forget to write things down sometimes and then that's a problem <laughs> so evening sometimes feeling um, and um, that was LMP finished yesterday thank you okay um, I think that was all the major bits wasn't it but so so just in summary we've got um, until this until yesterday no uh, fatigue or anything no shortness of breath at all mm -hmm. and we've had no of none of the um, uh, chest pain which is the the other worrying symptom that's all been fine headaches much reduced mm -hmm. but when you did get one it lasted the same amount of time yes. <laughs> yeah. all right that's that's okay that's that's I think pretty much um, that's pretty much where I'd, I'd hoped you would be in, in a month in terms of your post-covid stuff so good. that's good has anything else come up this month Melissa like health wise not in a bad way in a good okay. way um, so I was like purposefully not walking as much in my okay. lunch breaks because that would bring on the symptoms so okay I used to walk quite a lot um, maybe go shopping just to like just use my lunch break right. and I'd stopped that for like three or four months because it was just taking its toll on me Got you. I was able to do it again as normal um, towards That's I think great. the confidence built up as I was feeling better good uh, so yeah I was able to go book shopping in a lunch break which was great oh that's brilliant yeah, so yeah, back to basically what I used to be able to walk. Normal functioning, basically. Yeah. I, I think I still limit myself in that I don't go up the st up and down the stairs. I think that's why it's just it. gradually, gradually, you know, softly, softly, whatever it is, softly, softly, catchy monkey. How does that phrase make sense? Anyway, the point. Why are you catching monkeys? Anyway, so the, the <laughs> but yeah, you get the point. I think I think that's very sensible. Just gradually. And because you know, it's the people make the classic mistake of thinking, oh, I'm better now, so I'm just gonna go out and have a party. And just, no, you'll get there, but just yeah. this is perfect, so keep on going, just adding a little bit more and get there. Lovely, yeah. excellent. All right, now is there anything else I just wanted to check on? Um, I don't think so. Um, I looked at the comments on, on the video online, there are lots of people who are very worried for your health, but I have to say, Melissa, actually, you're in pretty good health. You are, you, are, you know, when I, I speak to a lot of people, and there are a lot of people in their 20s who have a much more extensive medical history than this, so, yeah, so... Not good for them, I mean... No, not good for them, good for but... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, know you, I think what happened is the timing of me doing health consultations coincided with the long covid and so yeah. it was just me constantly putting these symptoms on my channel and there's also as you can tell there was like a month lag before i uploaded it got it so i'm still getting comments of people like oh, are you okay are you dying and i'm like i'm all good now <laughs> yeah. so i mean it's, it's kind of sweet this. actually it's kind of nice that people care you it's know? lovely and it's brought a really good awareness to my uh, well, health as in like general well-being that yeah. I maybe didn't have as much before I took for granted or so. Yeah, but I think that's true and I think probably you've helped a few people uh, so. with long Covid just by showing that. Yeah, so, I, I hope so. I know yeah. everyone's probably got different takes on it. And, oh yeah, this oh, is yeah. what a healthy person had, I guess. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, it made me laugh when I sort of read some of them and they were like, oh, are you, are you all? I was like, it's just fine. It's but fine. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm going to do the blood pressure, yes. that's okay. I mean, not to, not to minimise, because you know, it is, like, when you get those symptoms, it is really scary, mm. we, but it, we, particularly when you come from a background of, you know, being, feeling okay, mm. um, by just being, you know, like, reading some of the comments, it sounds like, you know, you're on death's door or something, it's just like, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> I've always been told to check new things like my thyroid or um, what else was there? 
Yeah, I think someone thought I had like a, a chronic okay. fatigue or something. Okay. I'm just like, I, I don't have it anymore. Okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, just to give them their, their, their due, I think some of these things are things that you would want to eliminate. Mm-hmm. So if this was a new thing, but because by the time you came to see me last month, you were already on the up. So that positive recovery trajectory, sort of like that's OK, this is naturally on its way out anyway. If it had been a brand new thing, yeah. I'd have probably advised you to go and get some bloods done just to check the thyroid and to check, to eliminate that. Just, yeah. you know, MOT. Yeah. So, you know, I get it. But yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a bit scary when you're first... Um, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the weirdest symptoms as well, like... Random, uh, random things popping up. I can never find my stopwatch on here. Right. <laughs> Do pulse and blood pressure. Okay, so when you're ready, super. Grand, it's nineteen times four. good to be good at maths. I'm not. Feel fairly tight. Good. Good, good, good. Okay, thank you. I'll just strain the arm a second. side of your arm, that doesn't help. <laughs> Basic anatomy. There we go. over 78 so that's lovely low side normal thank you thank you thank you yes, I always seem to be told it's quite weak so that's really that was normal. okay that was okay it was just um <clears throat> i haven't done that in a while i was looking for the pulse on the wrong side of the wrist i wouldn't even know where to find it <laughs> well, i've been doing this for 17 18 years <laughs> might be a bit challenging diet wise but that's, <laughs> that's normal so just um pick up where you i mean i think we, we spoke about, a bit about this last time it's about not getting too particular about the food so it'll be sometimes when you're like you know you're eating with family and you'll have some fried food and some cake and whatever and that's fine um so if you you have a little health wobble afterwards don't kind of make it a resolution never to do that again just yeah. kind of factor it in and so so uh like probably one day of having a bit of a bit of a celebration meal will be fine a couple of days will be fine and see how it goes but if you if you notice that you've been living with family for a week and you've been eating fried stuff every day and then you start feeling a bit ropey then you know but play it by ear see how it goes and i think uh, if things carry on in the vein that they're doing now yeah great That's good. <laughs> yeah. so 
Shall we book in your third appointment for February? Yes, yeah. I don't really know any. I don't have any plans then. So. Okay, so we could just make it up. Yeah. <laughs> Would, do you want to do that via email? Would that be easier? Yes, organise that. I'll, I'll message you on Monday. Perfect. That's great. Yeah, like, thank you so much. It's like, always silly that, like, I forget that. It's like, diet is kind of, like, also helps me. It's, like, almost a medicine as well. But, yeah, that's the... the you, you must have hold, heard the old Hippoc Hippocratic axiom, like, let food be your medicine, which everybody pays lip service to but literally nobody does <laughs> so it's often taken to extremes by by people like you know the raw food people say let food be your medicine but actually Hippocrates the Greeks were all about balancing your food and of course they had ideas about temperament like if you were a, a fiery type they'd want to give you cooling foods and I if you're like a medical yeah. exactly yeah. like that so that was great Greek humoral medicine was sort of like the medievals and the, they took their medicine from the Greeks so, so um, yeah so they had the, they had the four humors which were earth air fire and water so they were collar um, collar was fire phlegm was water melancholy was earth and a sanguine or blood was air so there's the four the four humors were based on the four elements in mm. in sort of uh, platonic and aristotelian philosophy i think aristotelian aristotle <laughs> came up with it yeah, yeah. <laughs> greek anyway um but yeah so uh where what, the point of that ramble was that um actually his idea was that you should eat according to your constitution and eat a variety of foods and the food should be appropriate for your constitution so in modern terms that would mean if you're recovering from an inflammatory condition yeah. you don't want to be eating foods that will increase the level of inflammation in your body you want to be eating more anti-inflammatory stuff so that's just what we talked about last time so less fried stuff you know charred or burnt stuff so no charred no deep fried not too much added sugar yeah. and just more veg and plant stuff generally yeah. be helpful yeah yeah so like with the blueberries and the dark chocolate i guess yes. were they like the best one suited to my I th the blueberries and dark chocolate i like because there's I don't know whether they're the best, but there is some clini clinical evidence for both of them. So right. the blueberries, um, there's good evidence on the anthocyanins, the purple pigments in the blueberries, actually uh, reducing inflammation in the linings of blood vessels, um, and they seem to make capillaries less leaky. Um, there's lots of trials on them improving lymphedema, which is like drainage from like peripheral drainage in people who have like ankle swelling and stuff like that. So they're really so that that's why and then the dark chocolate the polyphenols in the dark chocolate which are kind of related compounds mm. and they're procyanidins and anyway they're kind of related but the dark the polyphenols in the dark chocolate are similar they'll reduce inflammation in blood vessels but they'll also they also dilate blood vessels so they improve circulation throughout the body so and there's lots of clinical research on both of those so yeah. that's why and they're both quite pleasant and easy to consume. I do not mind eating loads of blueberries. <laughs> homework. That's good. Blueberries. I'm happy that you've managed to get in some dark chocolate as well. Like the the, yeah. the hardcore type too. So it's so. kind of fun because it's something I've never tried to eat before. Okay. Obviously, chocolate's something bad. <laughs> it's really not. I mean, the thing about chocolate is, yes, it does contain sugar. But what's fascinating is that in all the clinical trials on it, particularly with dark chocolate, you the 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 effect of the polyphenols outweighs the effect of the sugar in terms of it so for example it seems to reduce um blood sugar it seems to reduce the risk of developing diabetes or, or, or having strokes or heart attacks it's, it's on a population level it seems to have that effect um so that's interesting so it outweighs the sugar in it but yeah, yeah. if you can go for the sugar free even better you know great yeah 100 i guess it's just benefits <laughs> by that point. well i mean any okay this is this is I'm, i have so many hobby horses but this like with the, with the dark chocolate i i think it's great so but even ordinary dark chocolate whatever whatever form you can take it in as long as it's not got loads of added sugar like the higher the dark the better so i usually say 85 or higher if you can mm. that's preferable but um uh, yeah with, when you're making eating chocolate they add extra cocoa butter which is the fat 
so they add a little bit extra of the fat because that that gives it the snap and the solid sort of properties mm. but yeah. it's so if you think about cocoa beans yeah. uh, are 50 percent fat anyway because they're like nuts and then they're ground to yeah. a liquid once they've been toasted, roasted, whatever, ground to a liquid and shelled, ground to a liquid, and then you add extra cocoa fat and then a bit of sugar. Now in 100% dark chocolate, they'll just add the extra cocoa fat. Yeah. So it's it's like just, it's, you know, the optimal form would be like just the beans. <laughs> it's like, as natural as possible. Yeah. But you actually want to enjoy it and for it to be a part of your, you know, an easily obtainable form. So, yeah, the, yeah the, the, it's, it's, it's still really good for you. So. Do some people actually just eat the beans? Is that no, possible? some people do, but you can buy the nibs from supermarket, which is just the mm. beans, and you can put mm. them, people put them in smoothies and whatever, but I think actually if you put them in smoothies, there's a risk of like if you combine them with other things with protein in them, the polyphenols can bind with the proteins and you can reduce the absorption a little bit, so it's better just, I just think, have the chocolate, it's fine, it's simpler yeah. and more, more pleasurable. So. But easier to think about, <laughs> there will be slightly more reactions. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, that the if you wanted to get really like, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with chocolate, so if you wanted to get the, the, the really, you could get the beans and then grind them and then make them into a traditional drink with water, which was how they are made, but then that's like, so you can do that, but um, like hot we're not, yeah, but the, like, but the original, yeah, so it's really rich and it's lovely, but then I'm not trying to get you to substitute coffee or tea or t I'm not really worried mm. about the caffeine it's just like the daily intake of regular doses of these polyphenols same yeah. with the same with the blueberries where we want the daily intake of um, those anthocyanins in there because yeah. those over time will really help your circulatory system function better yeah, yeah. it's always good yeah exactly <laughs> which the fried foods have like, zero things like that to help, yeah. so exactly more i have the blueberries it's instead. offsetting yeah, yeah. exactly exactly so, yeah i feel like i've i learned a lot since my questions like, i got really interested in stuff because gosh is it the a ages or something we talked in detail about some sort of fried food encouraging was it yeah a, well, uh, age age yes like yeah that advanced glycation yeah, end so products just ended yeah. up looking on like a little like nutrition for dummies kind of book okay, they're, it's so interesting so. they're helpful although i have to say those for dummies books aren't really necessarily for dummies some of them are quite like what <laughs> yeah. but either way it's inspired me to Excellent. be more interested in health in general good and longevity so. that makes me happy good yeah, excellent well, thank you for coming Right. Um, how have you been? Be good, yeah. Yeah, quite good. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get into it in a minute. Let's get us some water. Oh, um, thank you. You're not... You like almonds? Yes. Good, because I've added a bit of almond flavouring to the water. Just, <laughs> just makes it a bit less boring. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little... Uh, it's a very, very easy party trick of mine to make water less boring. <laughs> All right, so... Mm. Last time, yeah, it's all right, isn't it? It's, it's sort of, really nice. It's sort of like a little bit Battenberg cakey. It is. It's like a dessert. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. It's super easy. Anyway, right. Last time I saw you, it was in November, yeah. and I think you got. I think it was just a no. It was a slightly adjusted herbal tincture from me in January for mm. three weeks. Yeah. So just to start off with, when did you finish that tincture? Probably about two weeks ago. Was it two weeks? No, maybe more like a week ago. Okay. It was quite recent. Okay, that makes sense because you got it in mid-January, so it would it was yeah. three weeks worth, so it might have lasted you three to four weeks. Yeah, I was a lot better this time at having it, even if I did well the done. meals wrong and stuff like that. So. <laughs> Excellent, so tincture. And did you receive it? Can you remember when you received it? Was it sort of end towards the end of January? Yes, it would have been because it was okay. After the that makes holidays. sense. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Finished, and and but you managed to take it most of the time twice daily. Yeah, I think cool. I've slowly got more used to the taste now. So. <laughs> it, is, it doesn't get any tastier, does it? But you know, well done, well done, good. All right. So, how? What's your what's your overview? Because um, you say you're feeling good generally. Yeah. Are you still getting any headaches? 
No headaches, no. No, not Excellent. at all. Excellent. Yes. That's very good. So not at all, because I think last time you were still getting about once a week or once every two weeks, so that's mm. great. Um, had they cleared up already by January? Because you'd obviously... Yes, I think okay. so. They haven't right. happened this year since I've been at work. Can't credit the tincture then, so that's good. But that's good. That's great. As long as they've cleared up, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Already resolved by January. Excellent. Um, and you did say just before we started recording that your holidays have been good, so... Yeah, I got a lot of rest. I okay. think I had about two weeks or so off and it was just really nice to okay, not have the stress. <laughs> yeah, I just okay. deflated. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So uh, just two weeks off, and was that sort of uh, just until the first week of January or something? Uh, yeah, some, somewhere around there. I think I went back like the 6th or something, maybe. So, yeah. Okay, that's normal. Like, yeah, okay. yeah. So um, the next thing would be just the fatigue. Mm. So you said um, last time you were still getting a, a few bouts of tiredness, I think, with, with a bit of just occasionally feeling sick, although we thought that might be the green tea. How's, how have both of those things been? The green tea I definitely confirmed is like when I do have it occasionally now, yep. I do get like the buzzes or like I, yes. I, I, get, I seem a bit drunk almost. It's very weird. There is a phrase called tea drunk, actually. It, it's, a, it's a thing. There's a, there's a channel called Mayleaf. It's the, the shop, there's a shop called Mayleaf in Camden. They have a YouTube channel right. and he reviews different teas. And green teas, uh, they cause it tea drunkenness. They, right. they can give you a bit of a buzz and a bit heady. People have different sensitivities. Some people get nothing, but other yeah. people get actually a bit... That's so good to hear, because like mm. when I used to have it, I must have had quite a strong tolerance, because I was right. having it every day, and I'd, I'd never felt buzzy or anything. Okay. I did, it just felt like it took away my morning, like, foggy mind. Yes. But now, because I have it so rarely, I do you feel really like... You really notice it. I really notice it. <laughs> Some so. people really like that feeling, so... Oh, so. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> really good. It makes, okay, yeah. not, not good. Okay, no. so because we, we, I think we talked about last time about not having it on an empty stomach and not yeah. doubling up with the chocolate. Did that help? I not did, yeah. I try really to have it still before lunch, but make sure I've definitely had a, a yogurt or something eat before. before. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, okay, good, good, good. So that resolved that nausea. What about the fatigue generally? Any, any tiredness? It's not entirely gone. Ooh. I think it comes in waves and. The one time I've had it quite bad was recently I had like a tummy bug at the start of oh. February. But like literally a few days afterwards, it was like all the fatigue symptoms came back. Okay. And I remembered what you said something about like inflammation in yes. the body. And it really did feel like that lined up with it. That okay. It was it just that extra, extra bit of back. physical stress had re-triggered that initial. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it hasn't been back since good so. I think I think that's okay it is a bit like it's like a non-linear -lin recovery curve and any anything any time you get anything that will push up your level of physical inflammation a little bit yeah. whether that be eating a bit of too much like deep fried deep fried food or just doing some heavy exercise or a, a, an illness yeah. that might just temporarily re-trigger those post covid -y symptoms but each time it should get milder because your body's returning more and more towards its normal baseline yeah so yeah that That's makes sense good. how long did that fatigue last for um gosh about a week I was out of action for that weekend. Just okay, so one week. And move. was that one week of continuous tiredness? Or? No, it got better each day. Okay. But I just one. felt like my body was like lead and I didn't really want to <laughs> go anywhere. Okay, which got is it. good because I had no plans that weekend. <laughs> so that worked out at it least. Did, that was, that was yeah. One week low energy slowly improved. All right, so. Good, no headaches, a little bit of fatigue. Tell me a little bit about the tummy bug, as in, like, what, what, when you say tummy bug, uh, feeling sick, or did you feel sick? Any nausea? I did have a bit of nausea, yeah. Um, I could only seem to eat crackers. That's um, normal. Yeah. Okay. So it, I didn't really want tea or anything, like, too many liquids either. Sure. So I was just having cracker bread and butter. and Butter? Yeah. Oh, dear. Still okay. butter on it. When you just... 
here's a tip. When your tummy's upset, just stay away from fatty stuff. <laughs> Crackers, uh, the, the acronym is BRAT. Bananas, rice, apples, tea and toast. Uh... BRAT. Bananas, rice, apples, tea and toast. For some reason, they all seem to be pretty good. I feel so, like intuitively, yeah. I always end up having apples yeah. and crackers yeah. and bananas. They're so all kind of weird helpful. that the body knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not so much butter. I stay away from yeah, butter. I mean, it's it makes crack crackers, crackers tastier. Yes. It does. <laughs> it's just crackers. It's quite sad. I know. It is a bit sad, isn't it? But I don't, I'll tell you one. one. Okay. So, so you got that tummy bug. Um, how many days were things off for? About four okay. until it was entirely gone. Okay. Um, Thank you. Any fever? No, no, just like really weird cramps. Cramps like where? In my stomach, stomach area. Cramps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, now you say it was a bug, not something that you ate. I actually don't know if it was. I just <laughs> okay. called it a bug. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, did anyone else get it? No. You no. Know? Okay. And had you eaten anything unusual before getting it? I don't think so. Okay, probably was a bug, but yeah. Know, just, so no, not, so. but you weren't feverish. No, no change in temperature or anything like that. No, okay. no. Okay, um, resolved, and since then, no more problems. No, not at all. Perfect. Okay. And that's like the first cold I've really caught this year. Okay. So the first yeah. sort of Ill illness, All right? Good. Okay, well, not good, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, all right, so um, you mentioned last time this wasn't a main major thing, but there was a little bit of um, period pain. Is that, has, that, mm. has that recurred? Have you had more of that? No, not more. It does seem to be... Like, it's, it's always been just concentration on the first day, sure. anyway. They haven't been... It hasn't been so bad that I don't want to go to work or anything. This okay. time. Like I can soldier through it. Good, all right, but still, still on the first day, a little bit of discomfort. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. a bit, yeah. Okay, thank no, you. Probably not as much as before, though. It's like I don't think we gave it a score out of ten or or, or, or whatever last time, so it's so difficult to yeah. to quantify. Did you have to use painkillers? No, no. Not okay, you're not. I don't think you did last time either. So. No, I think even if it probably is the pain level that I would have, some I just don't. Yeah, to tend to avoid it unless you absolutely have to. Have it, so. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, all right. Now, I am hoping that you've... Because last time you were able to go walking again, which is great, and function shopping. Are you back to normal functioning now, would you say? Yes, other than the recent Bout fatigue. Bout of fatigue, post-stomach post thing. thing. I've been great. Just okay. fine walking. Didn't even have to think about it as an issue anymore. Good, that's how yeah. it should be. <laughs> yeah, I know. Christmas, <laughs> I went on walks as usual. That's great. So no more, no more um, having to think about walking, which yeah. is important. Sounds good. Um, all right. So I think what else did we have? I think those are all the main things. I presume you've not had any chest pain. No. No. Excellent. And um, the, I think that the headaches were mainly around the eyes, weren't they? So that they seem to have resolved. Yeah, I think that got a lot better straight away when I changed the brightness on yeah. the computer the and was trying to take more breaks and like, do the stretches. In the that's kitchen. really important in your line of work. So yeah. you, can, <laughs> you can take that one to the bank. So that's good. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's just go, go over the, the few homeworky bits then. So the blue light stuff. Are, are you still are you using blue light filters? Um, I put it on night mode, so potentially. That's that's it. That's okay, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. And on, on devices, I think we said uh, at all times. Um, and uh, are you doing any of the meditation? It's just a sort of one to three minute meditations. I have some nights, so okay, I got good. a bit lazy in that I do it when I'm lying in bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Yeah. I actually, another therapist mentioned to me that I need to be doing it, and then it reminded me. I was like, oh, I'm really not. I keep putting off the meditation. <laughs> okay. The most. Well, okay, here's the thing. My two suggestions would be, firstly, don't, um, don't make it into a huge should, because that'll kind of like, it really negatively weights it. But secondly, 
um, I think I've said this to you before, it's one of my favourite sayings, set a low bar and stick to it, right? Yeah. So if it's like, oh, I've got to do this five minute, just make it one minute, just yeah. make it as low as possible and then fix it to a particular routine. So for me, I know it's when I start getting ready for bed, that's when right. I'll sit down and do my meditation or like I do my teeth and then my meditation. So okay. it's, it's part of my it's like habit stacking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly that habit, that habit stacking. So you're just it becomes part of the fabric of your daily reali reality. So two two major points. If you're finding you're resisting, mm. make it easier, make right. it smaller shrink okay. it on the principle that it's better to do your teeth every day for 30 seconds than it is to do it once a week for five minutes do you know what i mean yeah it's like same diff so with the and often with the meditation once you start mm -hmm. if you are really stressed you like sometimes you'll want to go on for longer and sometimes you won't sometimes you'll be like oh that's enough but yeah just just the principle so so play with that but that's yeah. great it's fantastic that you've been doing it so that is not definitely not enough <laughs> well i don't what's enough do you know what I mean? It's yeah, just like build, building in a new thing. So. Yeah. yeah. I like the idea of trying to do it with like teeth brushing or something though. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. Definitely just wouldn't forget it that way. Yeah, so to hook it to something, make yeah. it part of the day and then just make the make the sort of barrier to entry much lower. So mm. it's like a much lower thing and then because it's like the same principle with an exercise routine. Everybody goes, to, tries to like, I'm gonna get myself in shape, and they go to the gym and do it, try and do it, and then it's like within a, a few weeks they're like, I'm not going anymore. Mm. Whereas if they just said, I'm gonna do five minutes of stretches every day, and then maybe if I feel like it, I'll do more. That yeah. would, do you know what I mean? It's more like, sustainable. Totally, and and build from where build from where you are at. It's sort of yeah. Anyway. yeah. That's, but that's fantastic that you've actually been doing so because yeah. you didn't used to. It's so not that's great. zero. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so that's 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 a one hundred percent improvement from previous. So that's great. Um, and are you still maintaining a little bit of dark chocolate and blueberry intake? Blueberries more so than dark chocolate. Okay, fine. Only because I ran out <laughs> at one point, and then fine, fine. there's only like one specific Sainsbury's where I can find the brand. Fine. I had to go back and get that, but I'm back in the habit now. It's more on weekdays because I have it as like part of my work routine for okay. lunch um but blueberries I am so good at like excellent they're so easy because you can get them like anywhere okay. I just have them with yogurt every morning like as my Brilliant. wake up okay. routine that is a good and healthy addition so yes. excellent all right so dark chocolate sort of a few times a week yeah well that's I, I do really like it now good it's, it's so weird that the first time I had it, I was like, this, this is, is so, so bitter. bitter. Yeah. But I ended up liking the bitterness yes. over time. It's that's weird. Well, that's, that's interesting because there's some... Um, they've actually done studies... Because obviously dark chocolate has a bit of caffeine in it. It's got more theobromine in, which is this other stimulant. It's not as... It doesn't wake you up as much as caffeine. But there's a couple of studies now on theobromine and cognition like that show that uh, I think it's... Been, this is gay. I'll do the science really bit. Why not? Okay, cool, 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 good. Okay, because I can go off on tangents. But um, the in in the petri dish, theobromine seems to increase the amount of BDNF, which is brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is this compound that encourages nerve cells to re to grow new projections, new axons to it basically encourage nerve cells to grow. Right. And so theobromine actually increases the production of that in nerve cells in the petri dish okay. but they've actually done a small human trial where they gave humans i think just straight up theobromine not dark chocolate but right. theobromine for a month or so and measured the amount of bdnf in i can't remember if it was their blood or their spinal cord fluid or whatever but they measured the amount of bdnf and it went up with the theobromine and then after a month it was still higher than baseline it had gone down so in other words there's the because has long been a suspicion that dark chocolate is good for cognition because they've right. done brain imaging studies showing that it improves blood flow to the brain and we know that the antioxidants in it the polyphenols improve blood flow and mm -hmm. reduce inflammation in blood vessels but now there's this little study showing that the theobromine in it might actually encourage like repair of, of damaged neurons or, or, or new nerve outgrowth in the brain so that's super cool so yeah. it is actually a sort of a, a brain stimulant but the, the yeah. initial the initial tangent that was the second tangent i thought of the first tangent is that any food with caffeine in it yeah. and dark chocolate does contain some caffeine uh 
people just get to like it. They've done studies where they've, they've flavoured foods with a bit of caffeine and yeah. because it's got that little neuronal tickle, a little bit of, you know, pleasure circuitry tickling, uh, people actually get to like the flavour because it's got the caffeine in it. I guess that's what happens with coffee. Yep, yeah, exactly. Because obviously the, the actual flavour of coffee is pretty rank. You know, the first yeah. time you taste it as a kid, it's like, oh. But then, yeah, but you, people get habituated to it because they're like, oh, mm, caffeine. So it's kind yeah. of tasty caffeine is the, is the vibe there. I mean, the same happened the first time I had green tea, actually. I don't okay. think I liked it originally. And yeah. I forced myself to keep drinking it because I thought it was healthy. Of... And I, now I'm addicted. I love the taste. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so interesting. That's what happens. So, I mean, the thing, the, the, the thing about it's like almost like choose your... I'm not going to say addictions because addictions is a hardcore word, but it's like choose your habituations, <laughs> let's say. It's like a milder version because... I think with something like dark chocolate, it's a fairly positive substance to become habituated to because all the science says it does good things for blood yeah. pressure and cognition and whatnot. So, Great but, snack. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> the fact that you're having it a few times a week is pretty perfect because mm. um, uh, this is the, my final tangent, then I'll shut up and get on with it. But um, we've got... <laughs> good. Uh, the, I think the, um, there's a few studies now where they've looked at life expectancy uh, and sort of they found that Dark chocolate is one of those substances which is associated with a lower relative risk of dying from all causes. They call it all-cause mortality. Right. So relative risk doesn't mean absolute risk, it mm. doesn't, but it's, uh, it means relative to if you didn't eat it, <laughs> so to people who don't eat it. Right. But it's quite significant. It means like it's, 30, it's a 34% reduction in relative risk from all-cause mortality from some studies. So mm. that just means if you eat dark chocolate and that's just two or three times a week yeah. it will make you less likely to die all else being equal than yeah. if you didn't which that's, i think is a good thing yeah so it's like a all-around positive yeah. to eat it and it's particularly from sort of like from heart disease and from cancers were two of the things they found so oh wow they so say it's pretty that cool. about green tea as well sometimes green tea is very similar because they, it's, it's, they think it's the the procyanidins uh, the, the the type of compounds in them called flavanols which are very similar kinds of antioxidant so yeah right. it's really groovy hey anyway right yeah it's so interesting all these like they, it feels just, like superpowers a bit yeah, like which they're, which they're potions just, do you take but they're just little tweaks and i don't yeah. don't regard them as superfoods because mm. those are that's mythical it's it's just like it's just the idea that um you know every food that you eat has is a cocktail of different chemicals and some of those chemicals are potentially helpful some of them are neutral and some of them are potentially not so helpful yeah. so it's just like with everything in life if you can skew everything towards stuff that is more net positive mm. that will gradually enhance longevity and avoid yeah. the things which are slightly skewed towards more net negative. So I think the key to it is if you can make all of your pleasures skewed towards more net exactly. positive, you're winning. You're yeah. winning. Yeah. Like everyday choices are going to yes. pile up. Exactly. So okay. Exactly. So it's not about becoming an ascetic and giving stuff up and going to live on a mountain and <laughs> drinking yak butter or whatever. I mean, like, whatever. <laughs> anyway, right. Uh, not that you were planning to do that, but... So, I mean, no. I probably like the butter. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So good. No, but all good. This all all sounds good. So I mean, I think, I think there's no. I'm not going to herb you up again because basically, things have been okay. I think what I'll do is I'll have a little think after this and maybe suggest you some herbs in a tea that you could DIY and mm. then have on hand if the fatigue or dizziness comes back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you've got great. a toolkit. Yeah, and I love okay. tea. Cool, all right. Yeah, Brilliant. and I uh, also still have the uh, elderberry. Is it elderberry? Elderberry the that we elderberry yes drink as well that you said. Perfect. When That's I did just have the tummy bug. I was trying to have that. Oh, it might. It, 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 elderberry is brilliant for viral infections. Uh, um, so it's really, really good, particularly for respiratory tract stuff. Oh. So it would really help uh, colds, flus. Um, anything uh, covid yeah <laughs> anything virally we don't know for 100 percent for covid but we know from the lab that it contains anti-covid compounds okay so definitely in the laboratory elderberry contains compounds which prevent covid getting into cells so that's good yeah. and it also we know from lots of studies in humans it reduces 
the length and severity of respiratory tract infections, including flus and whatever. So, yeah. this, well, anyway, whatever, I won't yeah. get that's but a whole other tangent. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> but it might not help so much with with tummy bugs unless right. it was a vi if it was definitely a virus that was causing it. It might help, but elderberry is ever so slightly laxative, so it might have been a swings and roundabout situation. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. And it's very good to have in the cupboard because yeah. if you do get, if anyone, you or anyone in the household gets a cold or flu, yeah. you just start boshing it straight away. Swigging so the elderberry. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right, let's do the pulse and blood pressure. really upset when I got moved down the set because I couldn't keep up with the homework. Oh, oh this is just tragic. <laughs> At least I just hated it from the get-go. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. 108 over 68, which is a nice low normal blood pressure. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, I think I always come out as like the lower end. So yeah, which is great. Quite constant. You've got wiggle room. So yeah. Should it be needed? Great. Okay, so I think. Obviously, this is our last session, mm -hmm. so you know where I am should you need me. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. No, so all good. So what I'll do, um, I'll put a li I'll, I'll put a little prescription, a tea prescription together, email it to you on Monday. If I think of any other bits of homework, it might help. But I think for now, just keep on with the meditation, low bar, keep it simple, a little bit every day. Yeah. Uh, keep on with those little dietary bits, the blueberries, dark chocolate and uh, um, carry on. Keep up all the past homework. <laughs> keep, keep up all the past homework, yeah, exactly. And uh, But do let me know if any, I, I wouldn't expect it, it does sound like it was a, a one-off, I'm going to assume stomach bug, um, mm. but just let me know if any digestive gubbins happens again. Okay, yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.